The, our next speaker is Jose Avila Abellan from, from ALBA. Jose is an electronics engineer at ALBA, working mainly on beamlines and electronics, uh, beamlines and accelerator instrumentation support. He contributes also as a hardware engineer, a designer to de uh, development pro projects carried out in the ALBA computing division. Before moving to ALBA about five years ago, Jose worked as a hardware designer and tester in the automobile industry. And well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, let's just start with this talk uh, titled EM Dash Electrometer Comes to Light. This is a presentation about the development of an electrometer. So let's first, let's review what an electrometer is. Let's refer to the most trusted reference for engineers, which is Wikipedia. <laughs> An electrometer is a high precision electronic device for measuring electric charge, current in time, and the most modern ones are based on solid state amplifiers. This will define pretty well what an, our electrometer is. And the most common application is for ionizing radiation measurement, uh, that for example, uh, by using photodiodes, an incoming X-ray to the silicon, so due to the photoelectric effect, some charges are delivered that uh, produce a current flow. This current flow is sensed, amplified, digitalized, and then sent to the control system for uh, beam monitoring uh, or the experimental area, whatever. This is a collaboration project between Alba Synchrotron and Max4 uh, for the design of a high performance electrometer in order to share development resources towards the common objective. We didn't start this, this project from scratch because ALBA had some background in electrometer design as the first version of this equipment was designed in 2010. It was a mid-level electrometer uh, that was cheaper than commercial solution with comparable resolution. And it was based in four ALBA current amplifiers that were controlled with a uh, digital custom hardware, which core was a commercial, uh, commercial core which was using um, a custom interface, a custom connector with a custom pinout to control these current amplifiers. This electrometer has quite a good acceptance between the uh, scientific community. And when the new phase beamlines of the synchrotron were going to be produced, we had the demand to produce more units. But we have the problem that this commercial uh, core that was using a custom interface became obsolete. So this has the implication of a hardware redesign as we didn't find a direct replacement. And taking profit of, the, of this situation, we decided to redesign the equipment but, but facing a new strategy based on using commercial modules as much as possible, but those commercial uh, modules should use standard interfaces just in case one module gets obsolete again, we have more possibilities to find a, a direct replacement. The same facing the software development. So let's not use an integrated uh, development environment proprietary of the commercial module. Let's use open software so uh, it is more reusable. And by the way, let's try to add uh, advanced features to the equipment based on the experimental needs uh, that having feedback from scientists. So following this philosophy, we came to the idea of developing an instrumentation platform that would be, would be composed by a single board computer, tiny, cost effective, not very powerful because in case of mm, data processing needs, we would use an FPGA core. And the third block of this hardware uh, block diagram would be the specific application electronics block that implements the basic functionality of the equipment. In this case that I'm explaining, this is the current measurement, for example. And of course, all the modules should uh, communicate between them with standard interfaces. From the software point of view, the software embedded in the single board computer, uh, we will use a light operative system open source, which is uh, architecture in layers, where the lower layers are uh, standard drivers related to the, to the hardware that we have chosen, while the upper layers are related to the application layer of the equipment. Uh, from the gateway, the, the, 
that is embedded in the FPGA. We have a fixed uh, structure with two buses that I will explain later. One bus for configuration, one bus for data transfer, and the instanti instantiation of logic cores is always depending on the application we want to, to do. So following this, we came to this hardware diagram for this equipment based, as I said, with the single board computer, the FPGA module, and the specific application electronics block, all of them communicated with standard interfaces like I2C, FMC, PCI Express. Uh, the single board computer that we chose is an Intel NAC. It's a fanless single board computer. Uh, it's not very powerful, as I said, because uh, if, in case of data processing, this will be done in the FPGA, but it's powerful enough to allocate uh, uh, software architecture related to layers. But I want to focus on the, on the FPGA model that we have chosen. This is a spec that you know, maybe some of you know from, from CERN. It is an open hardware design. And we selected it, although it is not the usual application because it's usually uh, used in, in timing applications, because it has the interfaces that uh, are suitable for our application, PCI Express and FMC. The FPGA is big enough to, to the advanced applications that we foresee for this equipment, and because of the usage of the self-describing bus that I will explain later. From the, the specific application electronics block, let's say that we are using the same current amplifier that was used in the first design with little improvements like temperature sensor for game correction and calibrated game map. Uh, due to the inclusion of the FPGA in the design, we foresee to uh, implement advanced applications like, I will explain later, feedback, sample by sample operation, timestamp, and maybe this equipment will have to interact with other equipments, so we have included a lot of new connectivity. But maybe the most important uh, hardware improvement that we have done is this in this equipment is this card. This is an FPGA mezzanine card that we have developed at Alba. It is an ADC, 400 kilo samples, 18 bits, four channels, isolated ADC. And it is isolated because the ADC is in a separated ground from the, from the ground of the rest of the equipment. And this, this isolation can withstand up to one kilovolt isolation between the two grounds. So in this case, the detector, the current amplifier, and the ADC share the same ground. And the, digi the digitalization is done in this side. And this has some benefits uh, respect to digitalizing in the normal ground area respect to uh, other well-known architectures like uh, isolation amplifiers that usually have some nonlinearity problems. Uh, related to the gateway, as I said, we have implemented a dual bus strategy. We are using the self-describing bus, which is also a design from, from CERN. It's also available in open hardware. Uh, it, we are using self-describing bus for for configuring models, it's really useful because it allows to configure, to configure the instantiated modules in the FPGA from the higher software embedded in the single board computer. And for data transfer between logic cores inside the FPGA, we have developed a, a fast data transfer bus called Harmony Bus, which is oriented to uh, data with timestamp and real-time process processing capabilities. And well, my colleague Manuel, Manuel Brosetta will give a talk tomorrow related to this. He will, give, uh, he will give more details than me, for sure. About the software architecture, uh, we have a tiny Linux distribution that has been built with this Jocto tool. And as I said, it's distributed in layers, where the, the lower layers are mm, generic drivers uh, link it to the hardware that we have chosen while, while the, uh, the upper layers are related to the application. So, well, th this custom system, control system uh, has some interfaces from the user point of view. We can configure the equipment uh, locally with a touch display for basic configuration and basic monitoring. We can access to the equipment uh, via web so the single board computer has an embedded web server that allows complete configuration and monitoring. And you can even can configure a basic acquisition. 
and we have full access to the equipment with a Skippy protocol like any other instrument and of course via a SSH connection. So that's the end of the story. That's the instrumentation, instrumentation platform that we have developed. Uh, well, related to software, hardware, and gateware. And this is how, from a specific application development, it has been created an instrumentation platform reusable for future developments. So today we have developed an electrometer. If tomorrow, for example, we want to develop a voltmeter, we will only change those blue, blo blue blocks. So this has been uh, thought, this has been implemented to reuse software, hardware, and gateware as much as possible. Well, I've been speaking a lot about the instrumentation platform that we have developed, but what we are uh, implemented now is an electrometer. So I will show you some graphs that shows the performance of this electrometer. This is, for example, the current noise in the analog output compared to a state-of-the-art uh, commercial electrometer. And we can see that our equipment is quite better. This is the outcome of the efforts on the analog area. This is a comparison of the ADC acquisition. Uh, this is the outcome of the, of the efforts in the digital area. Compared to, to first equipment, we can see that now, now we can distinguish 25 femtoamps steps when measuring in the one and one range. So this shows the good performance of the ADC and the digital area, and this means a dynamic range of 92 dBs, which is quite a lot. Well, uh, this electrometer has been used since first experiments at, at Max4. So those are two graphs that were, that were acquired uh, with it, like the nitrogen absorption at Veritas and positioning at nanomax beam lines at Max4. This electrometer is a reality. We have uh, 12 units produced at Alba, 50 units produced at, produced at Max4, and 25 units are going to be produced at Max4 before the end of the year, while 12 are going to be produced at Alba. The next steps are related to gateware and software development, because uh, what we have implemented until now is the basic operation of the equipment, which is current measurement. So we are able to, to, to introduce this equipment in the beam lines, and the basic experiments can be carried out. But more advanced application that we foresee for this equipment, like time stamping, uh, sample by sample operation, feedback applications, that I think that Manolo tomorrow will be give uh, some examples about this. So these are still under development. And those are my conclusions. That are the three main ideas that I've been developing during this talk. We have developed an electrometer that meets the performance required by the scientists. We have developed an instrumentation platform which is stable and is ready for advanced applications. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. We have time for one or two questions. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, in the spirit of uh, our keynote speech today, I was wondering if you looked at, into sharing that, your, uh, your platform, or if uh, it's a technology transfer opportunities for maybe some commercial company picking up your, your platform for developing new instruments. Well, for developing the, the whole functionality of the, of the instrument, you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, you said your platform would be suitable for making other instruments also, just by changing the, the modular block at the bottom there. Well, in, in fact, we, we are using a spec from, um, from open hardware. This, this is an, uh, an open hardware design that is commercialized with another company. Oh, okay. And for example, the FMC that we have developed is also included in open hardware. So if some of you want to produce it yourself, it's free to you. Are there any more questions? Uh, hello, thanks for the talk. Uh, did you include in, uh, in your future development uh, the ability, ability to interface it with a uh, fast, continuous uh, 
scanning applications like uh, hardware continuous scans or continue yes yes yes, yes. Th this is integrated in the in the upper control system levels sardana okay all right thanks and let's thank the speaker again